How's it going everyone? I am Jeremy Alexander and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be making a wall jump and a wall slide. Now I know that that might be something I may have done before in a few uh, videos or in the mini platformer series if you're watching that. Uh, but I think that it's just kind of worth to do it again because it's a really easy effect that's fun to add. So what we're going to do is we are going to go into our event sheet here and let me actually minimize all of the work that we just did on our weapon select system here. Uh, and what we're going to do is we are going to check to see, let's start with the wall jump first. And we want to actually check to see if we're jumping on a wall and we want to actually kick out a little bit. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if, and I'm using WAS and D uh, for this character. So I'm going to say if the key is pressed, the jump key in this case is W, but if you wanted to, you could hit Y to make this an or statement. Uh, did I hit Y? Copy and paste the condition. Just like that, there we go. Uh, and I can actually make this into an arrow key as well. Uh, if you just wanted to have multiple control like that, otherwise I might even break that down a little bit further so you can actually, you know, define the control, especially when it comes to the gamepad and stuff. Uh, but for right now, this this will work perfectly fine if you wanted to have that in there. What we want to do is we want to make a sub event and we want to have two sub events. This first one is going to be for our player. They're both going to be for our player, but this first one's going to be by if we're by a wall. So if we have a wall to the right of us, and let's copy and paste this and of course flip this to the left if we have a wall to the left of us. Now if we have a wall to the right of us, what we want to do is we want to actually push out on the grid. So the way this works is 270 degrees is this way, it's facing up, whereas 0 degrees is to the right, 180 is over here, and 90 is at the bottom. So what we want to do is we want to kind of use that grid to actually push this away the proper way. So if we have a wall to the right of us, which right over here, this is to the left, but this little wall right here is to the right, as well as this wall. So if we have a wall to the right, what we want to do is we want to take our player and we want to actually use the platform vector controls. Oops. We want to use the platform vector controls to actually move it along that grid in the correct way. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the vector X to be negative, let's go negative 600. Uh, let me zoom in just a little bit more to fix my, there we go. Uh, so now you can see negative 600 and we're going to just try and mess around with some values here. And you can also tell that I'm not using a variable, which is probably something that you might want to do uh, to get more control over your wall jump. Uh, and it's definitely something that you're going to want to do uh, for variable jumping, which I've gone over in another video. But setting the X position, setting the vector X is not enough. So what we need to do here is we also need to set the vector Y. So let's copy and paste this. Let's go back and let's set the vector Y to something like 400. Now this is going to be a little bit extreme and we don't have that much real estate to work with here. So I'm just going to kind of show this to you as it is and we'll see how that works. Uh, from that, what I want to do then is I want to just copy this and I want to paste this here. Now the only thing I need to change since this negative 400 on our Y is always going to be going upwards, we don't need to change that. We only need to change the position of the X. Since negative is going to be going to the left, we need a positive number to go to the right. And since we have a wall to the left, we kick out this way to the right. And if we have a wall to the right, we kick out this way to the left. So let's hit save and let's see how this works. And let's see if this works. And we're going to jump. And there you go. You can see our little bit of a kick out when I hit the up arrow. Maybe that's not enough. Maybe I kind of want to go further. Let's just try to make this you know, a little bit bigger here, negative 1,200. And then let's make it the same. Uh, and then to that point, you could actually have a local variable that can be more of like a kick out. So there you go. And you actually need to be, you know, you, you when you're jumping along this wall here we're going to fix the collisions in a second and we're also going to fix the animation for the wall slide but when you're jumping along this wall you need to actually push you need to actually push out with the right arrow key and that's how it's really going to trigger this because you're jumping and you're pushing and that's going to affect your vector x position as well as your vector y so now we should be able to get back up here just like that and there we go. And that also kind of creates a pseudo double jump without actually having to add in the double jump. Cool. So now that we have that added in, we want to actually, let's look to see at my player right here. I do have a slide frame. And for this, all I need to do here is I need to set the state of my player. So I'm just going to set the value of my player state to equal 
slide just like this. Another thing I might go over in a future video will be gravity. And I think that that's a fun one to mess around with because then our player's walking upside down and everything's just reversed. And that might be that's something that I know Construct 2 handles really well. It's done, It's been done in a lot of Construct 2 games on the arcade, which you can go play. Uh, so that's always something fun that we can mess around with later on uh, or just add to this series. But now that we have our jump done, we can actually group this together. We can call this our player wall jump. Uh, and let's put this in here. Uh, and then what we want to do is we want to make our wall slide. Now, because we are doing a few things with the mouse by having the gun follow our position, and I haven't added in my look ahead camera yet, which is I think what I'm going to do for this. Uh, I want to actually be able to control the wall slide with the mouse just as much as I do with the arrow keys. So I'll explain what I mean uh, in a second here. What I want to do is I want to kind of copy this again. I want to just kind of take, uh, let me just take the W's pressed and let me hit paste. Uh, let's paste this here as a sub event and let's drag it out of that group. And I'm going to change this around. I'm going to have, oh, there we go. I'm going to have this be on down. So if the key, in this case, what I want to do, this is for our slides. This is so we can actually slowly slide down a wall instead of fall down the wall. So let me put this to A is down. And let me copy and paste this and put this one to D is down. Now, if A is down, I'll kind of want to do the same thing. I want to hit B. And I want to find out if I have a wall to the left, since I'm holding down the left key. If I have a wall to the left, then I'm going to actually do this again. I'm going to hit another sub event. And I want to find out if the player is not jumping and it's not on the floor. So it's perfectly in the air. So I want to find out that jumping is finished. And I'm going to hit I to inverse that. I'm going to take this block here. Uh, and again, this is the condition and this is the margin in case you didn't know that I'm gonna grab a I'm gonna grab on the condition It doesn't actually matter, but uh, it does matter when it comes to actually moving these things around uh, I'm gonna hit C to add another condition to this. And I'm gonna say on the player uh, What I want to do here? I want to make sure that on the floor is also inverse by hitting I so if I'm not jumping and I'm not on the floor, but I do have a wall to the left, that's when I want to actually set my vector Y. Oops. I want to set my vector Y to be something less. I want to just, it doesn't need to be zero because that'll actually just push it straight down, but I want to set it to immediately something like mm, 45. Let's try that. Uh, and then also what I can do is I can grab, and this is actually where this uh, animation frame is more uh, important. It's not important as much in the wall jump. Uh, so let's put the slide frame there and let's see how this works and this is only going to work for the left side so just like that i'm going to slide down you can see that it's kind of like bugging out a little bit and we're going to fix that in a second it's with our collision that is messing up but there you go for the most part it works it's actually setting our if i debug this uh let's go debug there we go if we debug this and we look at our object player and we look at its vector y so it's not here that's our y position in the actual layout it's here under the platform properties here. We can actually see the vector Y should be slowly going down to 45. There it goes, setting itself to 45 when I hit the A key and I'm on the wall and I'm not on the floor and I'm not jumping. When I kick out, you can see quickly it'll change. It happens really fast. It, changed its it should change its position enough. There we go. Hmm. I'm noticing it more, yeah, it's it's doing it more when I go here, but because it's, you don't see it change, you see it go to 150 over there, which is its default, and when I do this, you can see it go to 1200 for a second, and that's giving it the power to kind of push out this far, so it's not really uh, the number that pushes you out, it's just the number that pushes you up and subsequently accelerates you out. So let's cancel out of this. And let's continue with this. We need to now obviously do the inverse. But before we do that, I want to fix the collision and I want to add one thing for our mouse because we actually have our mouse controlling the angle of our gun. So the first thing I want to do here is I want to look at my collision and I want to look at the collision of the tile map that I'm using. So let's look at this tile map here. Now I'm using tile map collision and it should be relatively good here. If I show the collision polygons, you can see where it is colliding. If I double click on this, you can see how I'm colliding with this. So I don't need to change this. It looks like I might need to change the player collision though, uh, especially on the slide frame. So let's look at the slide frame and let's look at our collision polygon. So 
it may not be perfect. Uh, I kind of do have it already uh, attached there. And let's see what happens if I make it a bounding box. Generally, this is the issue with the collision. If if it does something like that, it'll freak out because yeah, you can see it's a lot smoother there, but now it's animating. It's not actually, there we go. Something like that is what I wanted. The frame, the camera, let's see. Let's get up all the way here. There you go, that's the slide that we want. So now it's working a little bit better and you can actually edit this to have the slide, to have this frame be like this. And actually, you know what, oops. Let's set this to bounding box again. Let's actually flip this image altogether. I kind of like the way that that looks more. I, I feel like that gives it a little bit more uh, of an actual wall jump appearance and that'll actually work for the wall jump as well. So now when we go here, you can see, all right, so now, if I didn't have this mouse moving around, and this is why I'm getting that shaking thing, if I didn't have the mouse moving around like this, then this would probably work fine. So let's see if we can fix that with this. If not, we can just take that out and we can just do it the way that I was going to do it originally. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add in one more check. We're gonna hit C. We're gonna find out if the player's X position, so we're gonna compare the X, just type in compare X and hit okay is less than the mouse.x. And what this should do is uh, the following. Let me hit play, it's easier to show it to you. So there we go. If I'm facing this way with the mouse, if I'm looking to the left and I'm trying to wall slide, I'm not gonna be able to do that. And that's what this does, it cancels it out. It won't let you actually have that condition unless you're facing this way. Now I can see here how that's not working because I'm trying to flip the animation. So I see why that doesn't work in this particular case. Uh, so I'm gonna flip this back here, but now it should work. Uh, now I can make this a bounding box again. I can hit save. Uh, and now that should be a lot better. Now I can fix that uh, edge right there to make it a little bit closer, but now it's only going to actually slide when I'm looking this way with this wall. When I actually look this way at this wall, it's just gonna fall down because it won't actually trigger that condition, which is what you need to have when you actually have a gun that kind of goes all around like this in 360 position. So hopefully that works for you. I know that this works for my games and I know that this is working for the game that I'm currently working on there. I can see that this is kind of having a little bit of trouble probably because of the animations but let me also just adjust the slide again. Uh, and to adjust the slide, I'm just gonna kind of move this over two by this point. Let's see, two is too much. Let's put this to one and let's put this guy to one. And let's leave it at that and see how that works. Let's hit save and just mess around with collisions like that. Oh, you know what? There it goes, perfect. So sometimes when you get errors like that, it could be because this mouse is trying to move around and that can move it around. It also could be the collisions are not happy with each other. Uh, but there we go. That looks like it's actually working really well, which means that we are going to have to have it the way that I originally had it uh, because we are going to have to use it for the other side as well, unless it flips, which it might. Uh, that was probably the worst way I could have done that. Let's put that back to 11 and... Let's put this to 11 as well. Okay, so now that we have our collisions pretty much sorted out, let's go back and let's do the inverse for this. So let's copy and paste this. Let's flip this to wall right. And what we wanna do here is we just wanna make this, we wanna find out if the mouse is greater or if the player X is greater than the mouse dot X. And the same thing, we wanna slide down 45. Uh, we want our vector Y to slide down to 45 so it'll go slower. Uh, until we hit zero because the gravity will take over and we will fall. Uh, this is just helping us get there and we will set the animation as well. So let's hit save here and let's hit play. Now there's gonna be other cool things that we can add to this. We can add in another effect here. Let's see how that works. So when I'm looking this way, I should be able to slide down. Doesn't seem like that's working as well as that. Why is that? Hmm, if that is funny, why that doesn't work. Okay, let's try to take this, let's try to take this out and see if that'll now work. If I have a wall to the right, let's go all the way to this wall. Hmm, for some reason it's not detecting this wall. Let's, and I don't know why, 
it's not detecting that wall. It doesn't make sense off the top of my head. Uh, oh, no, wait, now it does. <laughs> I didn't put this over here. Oops. It's like, wait a second. Why doesn't that work? Okay, let's try this again. And it needs to be, I just messed that up, but it needs to have those controls, your left and right position controls, which is what it wasn't nested in, which is why it didn't work. So now it's gonna work perfectly. And when I look to the right, I now need to fix that because I took it out. Let's put this to greater than, hit save. And now we should actually have this wall jumping to be a little bit better. There we go. So now we have our wall slide and our wall jump, which just kind of kicks us out. And there you go. You can mess around with this and you can have a lot of fun coming up with different things, but now it'll cancel out when we're facing this way. And really, I only have this in there because otherwise it's not gonna work uh, when you actually have the mouse uh, rotate around a an object like this but I think it actually works out pretty cool you know we can now switch our guns here and now it kind of promotes you to shoot this way because why would you shoot into the wall anyway so this kind of gives us this I don't know added element to our platformer game that you might be making uh, we have our slide frame working and everything's working pretty nicely here I'm trying to think if I want to add in a particle effect one thing that you can do is you can add in particle effects for when you kick out which is always another element thing that you might want to have another gameplay element is what I mean to say it's a nice thing to have and also when you slide down you can have a sliding sound effect trigger you can have other things trigger at the same time but really I just wanted to show you how you can actually add this into your game uh, with pretty much little to no effort. So thank you for watching this video. I do hope that you learned something from this and I hope that you're watching my mini platformer series on the Construct 2 Academy and you are uh, enjoying that as well because in that series we're kind of going over the whole uh, platformer from doing the wall jump, doing player controls, doing gamepad, doing WASD, arrow keys, uh, mapping that to local storage, adding in enemies, adding in you know, power-ups, things like jumping on enemies' heads and things like going faster and, and so many other things and increasing our vector Y and our vector X to actually benefit us. And also we're adding in a boss battle along with cool music, that like, dynamic music, so you can actually control that with menus. And I can continue talking about this project, but hopefully you're watching that and you're getting a lot from this. And this is just kind of like a supplemental video to this. Even though we do cover this in the mini platformer series, I think it's just kind of one of those things that I wanted to pull out from the series and make a standalone video of. So hopefully you uh, enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I am Jeremy Alexander, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.